Uh, happy 11-11, everyone. And today, we've got a special treat. Two brand new IEMs, Tin T4s, which should have had an Indiegogo launch right now. The Shore Tapes Shower. Shower Tapes, which are a combo electrostatic and dynamic. And I'm just going to mention a couple of things that I know are going to be on sale today. Um, starting with the SMSL SP200 THX amp. The review for that is scheduled for the 20th, but today is going to be a day where there's going to be a sale. And I know Appos Audio is going to sell a couple, so I'm going to link to that. The full review is on Patreon if you want to know. Possibly free share. So check that out. Focal Elex on Mass Drop are also today only 11.11 sale. I may have announced it on Telegram somewhere because I'm not sure if they're starting at midnight. But that's $100 off, and that's one of the headphones I wish was on my wall, but it's not. And uh, as you can see from my desk, I've got quite a few things going on, but really only two matter. Tinty 4 short tapes. Now, what I brought out was all the things that they're trying to replace. So I've got the Tin T2s here. And if you know me, you know if I, I need an IM Tin T2. Tin T2, T2, like Terminator, the good Terminator, yeah, the Terminator 2, that's the one. I've got the blonde BLO3s, which are cheaper than the Tin T2s, and frankly, better than a lot of things I've ever used. And even though some people have uh, claimed to not really love the Tin P1s, I fucking love my Tin P1s. And the Tin P1s are out because these are a planar IEM, and the short tapes uh, are an electrostatic. So they both do some very, very specific things. And I think that the tapes do some things better than the tin P1s, and the tin P1s do some things better than these. So we're gonna discuss all that right now, or well, after I look at the hardware that comes with things, let me shove away the guest stars. Tin T2 here, you sit here. Um, that is all black wire, you don't even notice it. Let's plug this back in. Here we go. Short tapes. These have been out for a while. Other people have given them reviews. If, they, if you hear the buzz, you know the buzz. What these don't have is a buzz, like in them. You see, combining this look of like a black box and what looks to be adjustment screws, but they're not, it's just red and black. It'd be cool if one of them was blue and black. Then I could tell them apart easier, but they say tape L, tape R, shower, S H U O E R O 9. The first thing I thought of when I put these in was oh my god, are these are the 10 P1 replacements. Because the electrostatic driver in them is one of the finest reproduction things I've ever heard. Like in an IEM. Usually when I get an IEM and it's like, oh, dual driver, it's got a dynamic and a, uh, a Knowles module, a Knowles a balance armature. And you can kind of tell. You can kind of be like, all right, yeah, I get it. The low one's coming from this, and the Knowles is doing that, and I can tell it's a little... But there's so much variation, and then you have like three of those modules and like 16 Knowles. And immediately, I knew that the electrostatic, the low energy electrostatic in this, was, well, frankly, uh, better than those as far as just fucking detail because you can imagine like an electrostatic like have my stacks are well actually the stacks are back there and it's a very light diaphragm and it's moved with static electricity and nothing really touches it and it's it's weightless but it's this big so now take that shrink it down to the size of like i actually don't know the actual size i know there's a 10 millimeter dynamic in here i'm imagining that electrostatic is tiny as like, if it's this big, ugh, I'm pulling a magnet off of here. Oh, God, it's so stuck. All right, you know what I'm not doing? There we go, pull them out. If the actual electrostatic driver was that size, I'd be amazed, because that would be huge. Huge. Because it's just the most finite, detailed thing. And I think, compared to the 10 P1s, which are a 10 millimeter planar, these win in detail. 
in upper treble detail. Here's the thing though. These have upper treble detail and that 10 millimeter driver is tuned for low end. So you get incredible highs and actual deep, hard hitting lows. The mid range, however, is a little like, it's there, it's not missing. This is not a crazy V-shaped IM. I just think that if I'm gonna compare them to the P1s, now that I have something to compare to, because I put these back in and I'm like, wow. These are mid-focused. These are just a 10 millimeter planar. They play everything that's vocal, everything that's under 6K and above 200. It is just a flawless victory for the Tin P1s. And these are almost the exact opposite as far as frequency response. So if you're looking for subtle, minute detail, these, if you like a little bit warmer, a little more abrupt sound, I'd probably stick with the Tin P1s. I'm linking to all these in the description. Hopefully the 1111's got their sales going on. Oh, throughout the day, I will be posting in the community tab here on YouTube. You shouldn't have to do anything special to see that. Just check your subscriptions. I will probably pop up and there'll be some weird anime screenshot wallpapers. And I just want you to know that I'm saying something like, hey, I found this is on sale. Or, hey, I found this is on sale. They'll be popping out throughout the day. Um, I have all these IMs fitted with the exact same Dakoni tips. These actually ended up on um, Mass Drop, which I was surprised to see, but at least you were able to purchase them. We should talk about the rest of the things that come with the Shure tapes before we move on to the tin uh, T4s. Um, interesting case. They're going with that whole, like, it's made of cardboard, There's it's bright orange, and there's uh, white and black piano keys. Oh, my phone's gonna do a thing. I'm gonna undo my phone's thing. Shushy. So, I mean, it's all right. It's all right. It comes with some basic uh, tips. Really wide flange silicones. Interesting case. Then it comes with this, which is the smoothest suppository M&M cosplay I've ever seen. And there's little arrows that show you what you need to do with it. And I handed it to guests in my house. And I'm like, hey, look at this. And they're like, what the fuck is this? I'm trying to get it open. Hold on. It takes a lot of concentration because it feels like it's made out of a non-stick pans. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's so slippery. There you go. So it's foam lined. They just cut the foam and then they shoved it in there. And you can use it for your IMs. It's just ridiculous. Like, it's so slippery and smooth. And then by the time you get it in there and you're, like, balancing it and you get this on, you... I feel like I'm gonna drop it every 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 time I pick it up. I feel like it's it's a game of, of don't take these to prison is what I'm basically fucking saying. Okay. Stay. The wire. Um, I don't know what it is. Older IMs, and this is gonna go for the tin T4s as well. They're just fucking up the wire. Not not it's terrible. It's not terrible. Two years ago, this would still be an amazing wire. This is a four wire, a little bit, little bit rubbery, a little bit rubberized. It's dead straight. It's a big weave into another big weave, all copper. Cute little little split there. It says shower on the top. It's these are uh, MMCX. They're both MMCX. The tapes and that good indications on the wires and the units themselves. Big letter L, big letter R. So I mean, as far as accessories go, you shouldn't need to like upgrade this to a balance cable, although. That is sort of my kink now. Put those down for a second. Let me look at this. This is a modified wire from the Tin T3. And I loved this wire and loved it so much. I sent it all the way to the UK to have uh, Skedra, who runs Viking Weave Cable, I said, hey, could you take this cable and re-end re it with like a 4.4? And he's like, sure. Cost a fortune. But I don't think I found another cable of its kind where it looks like we're going up with a six no we're going up with an eight and ending up with two fours and it's just beautiful like that's a beautiful cable and i have it running to my tin p1s tin p1s again not a great cable on them let's talk about the tins so when i first got them 
Because here's the thing, the 10 T2s are still, still, still to this moment. If you said blondes or 10 T2s, I'd be like, well, get whichever one sounds more appealing to you. Because the 10 T2s are gentle and safe and wide and smooth and calming and oh, everything I would ever want in an IM, cheap or expensive, they're a great place to be. And then the 10 T2 Pros came out and it was like, oh, fucking treble, fuck, fuck. And it hurt my soul a little bit. And then I said, all right, I'll wait. Then the 10 T3s came out and it was like, it was aggression in the way that the 10 T, the P1s are with the planar, but trying to do that with dynamic and it was on, I didn't like the 10 T3s at all. I recommended them, like they're not the biggest pile of garbage, but looking back in hindsight, it's like, if I had to pick, and I did, I sold all my 10 T3s and all my T2 Pros, kept just the T2s. So when the T4s were announced, and they said, oh, we're gonna send you a pair, I was not jumping for joy. I was huddled in a group, sort of hoping that they didn't try to pursue that lineup, hoping that they perfected it with the 10 P1s, and they're done. And I'm pretty sure this is the best case scenario. The tin T4s. Um, these are weightless. Like this is, I believe, machined aluminum. I would love to know the specs, but here's the deal. It's 1111 when you're watching this, but it's 1110 right now as I'm recording it. And the Indiegogo, where you can buy them, and I believe they're going to be initially sold for $80 a pair. Then they're going to, once the Indiegogo is done, they're going to be $110 a pair. But if you get them on Indiegogo, I think you get a $20 credit at Linsoul, because Linsoul is the one who's importing these and setting them up. So $90 a pair, you're getting an Indiegogo, which means you're going to have to probably wait more than three days to get them. But they did good fucking did good making them super they're a very similar design and i'll unpack unpop that one instead of being what the tins were or the tin t2s were which was this stainless steel gun metal with the side loop it's a very similar design where it's a aluminum they said it was expired by cars and that's just i don't understand that but it's got this little wheel pattern in the back weighs nothing very clean, very straight. I just, that's it. This is fine. This is fine for a 10 IEM. This is exactly what I expect, in fact. And this shape makes it really fucking comfortable. There are, 10 T2s, anyone who has 10 T2s, you guys know that those are comfortable IEMs, correct? Because these, on this table with the 10 P1s, the blondes, the shower tapes, and the T2s, these are the most comfortable. Straight off the bat. The weight and the shape are just perfect. Like any other company who makes anything else like this, why are you bothering? Why the fuck are you bothering? So just loop around your ear. The wire is, it's not terrible. I've grown to be okay with the wire. I was first, I was like, oh God, but it's regular head and then two wires. That had eight wires. This has four wires. This has four wires. This thing, I don't even know how many it had, probably four or six. But there was a super tight weave. This is just a really loose silver weave of two wires. And then when it gets to the split, it's just two wires. Uh, just, I'm sorry, it's just two wires. It's one wire up. And I'm like, well, do I like that? That feels cheap, but it is a coaxial wire because it, it has to, there's no, there's no twist in here or bulbs that you're feeling along the root. So it's not the worst design. And in fact, if I really try, and I haven't yet, could I? Mm. One of my favorite things to do is to split IM wires really far apart. I did it on the Fios. And this is the perfect design for that. You would just have to get this to slide down, which I'm not 100% sure you can do without destroying them. But it'd be nice if these were a little bit longer, just for my anal fucking horseplay. What? Um, they feel good in the hands. 
Sound. Oh, I should probably get back to sound. I'm going to plug them into my ears for a second because I've been going back and I had to pull out my tin T2s, which I haven't honestly listened to in several months because the table behind me just keeps getting bigger and knowing what is great is just stuck in my soul. So let's go next track. Hmm. This sounds like if you took the tin T2s and a year and a half later upgraded them. Like not tin T2 Pro where you said, okay, let's just shove a bunch more trouble in it. And not tin 3 where they completely fucking changed the way they sound and brought them from smooth and relaxed and wide to aggressive and close. This feels like they're taking smooth and wide. Okay. Now let's bump the cost of the driver up. Ooh, I'm getting a little bit more treble. Siblings, not quite, but okay. Definitely hearing more detail. Still wide. And then dumping like a nice smooth buttery amount of low end on there. So whatever the tuning was in the Tin T2, that was the basis for the Tin T4. And that's great. As I skip through tracks, as I skip through tracks, listening, every once in a while, I'll hear something that I'm like, oh, that's what this is for. Hybrid, Lonesfield, big techno sound, like, like we are dancing. And I am dancing. They take what would be the Tin T2's like 100% vacation sound. That's what I call that. I'm now officially calling that a vacation sound. And they they give you some tequila on the beach. They give you just a little bit. You're a little bit more focused. You're still sitting on the beach. You're still relaxed. But you're like, oh, oh. Oh, is that what that sound's supposed to be? Oh, well, we could party now. Yeah, it's... It's being a little bit buzzed while sitting on the vacation beach. Where those are just straight up like fruit daiquiri. These let a little alcohol to your drink. I know, this is a Z review. How are you guys doing? I don't think I'd have them change anything with these. I'm trying to find like where they fucked up. Let's face it. T2 Pro, T3. I change a lot. These, the way they fit, the way they feel, the weight, the comfort, even the wire. I'm having a hard time pulling anything out. I'm going, mm, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. There is, on, I've only had them for like a couple days. So I haven't given like 80 hours of break in and use. But I've had them in long enough to know what they sound like. And they sound like a very competent 80 to $110 IAM. And then you have the fact they don't come with an M&M. Not the artist, the bat, this bar of, the bar of do not drop in the prison. So, they come at this. Fucking, this is their, Tin P1 came in that awesome little case. Well, here's the daddy of that case, which is lined on the inside. Ah, magnets, bro. You get a selection of tips, even some foamies, but however, the foams, and I talked to Linstall about this, I'm like, Hey, you come with foam tips again, but I usually use a large one in my right. And if you look at the tin T2, that's a large tip compared to that. And they said, well, if we have some of these lying around, we could probably include them with these. So imagine getting the, I'm just imagining getting the blue tips on these by default would be just, but that's for the future. That's for after the Indiegogo separates. If you guys mention it, when you go there, if you place an order, if you want them, that might be a thing because everyone's been looking for replacements for the Tin T2 tips, but no one's actually found them. So who better to ask than Linsol who actually is selling them? I endorse these, but I'm gonna say this. If you're looking for more detail, these are the Tin T2, the relaxed set with more detail. If you want more detail, your options at this price range in the $100 plus range are the $130 Shure tapes, which 
pretty much earn their reputation for why people love them because of that finite electrostatic detail. It's just, mmm, it's just, mmm. I don't love them for everything. I would still take my P1s on like half the songs. This is great news. I don't like to get a headphone or an IEM and just be like, I just fucking sucks. There's, there's, a, there's an ass for every seat and a seat for every ass. So I'm going to try to go through this list real quick before I end. Tin P1s. Aggressive, planar, mid-range. Enough detail, enough bass. Not a lot but enough. And then just the most interesting delivery pattern I've ever heard, and I love them to death. The Blonde, BLO3s. If you're watching this video and you don't have an IEM, and you want to know what a good IEM is, these things with a changed wire, because I've been using the stock wire, and just like I remember, the stock wire is hot garbage. Replacement wire in the description. The stock wire is hot garbage, and it's impossible for me to wear them. These things are essentially godlike. And people are, people take these over, well, they'll probably take them over everything on this table. But what they don't win is the electrostatic Shure tapes. That high end is better than the Shure tapes, than the um, blondes. If you were, they were asking me to compare the low end between these two. Because the tins have that little bit of a low end bump, and they've always the tin T2s had that low end bump, and it's fucking close. The, the, the low end bleeds. People tell me the low end bleeds in the BLO3s, and I I tend to agree a little bit, but it's forty dollars. That's this many ten dollar bills. That's nothing. The low end bleeds. I don't cry about it. If you spend $1,000 on an IEM and they tell you the low end doesn't bleed and then it bleeds, then you get angry and you write letters. But that, it's perfect for how much it costs. It's perfect for double what it costs. The problem is when these things are not on sale on uh, Indiegogo, they're going to be triple what that costs. So they have to do something special. And they do soundstage. Those things do some crazy weird imaging. They're they're much like the, um, the old Bravo Cupids. These... Comfort, fit, finish, wiring, everything out of the box is just fucking fine. J better than fine. It's it, it's pretty perfect. It's a per. It, this should have been the Tin T3. The Tin T3 should have never existed, and this should have been the next revision of just calm, but a little bit more detailed, a little, just a touch, just a just a minute. These feel like they're based on the Fio FH5s more than anything. And then, Shure Tapes, which, come on, you got this. Shure Tapes, which I'm plugging in for no reason, I'm not putting it back in my ear again. They're heavy. They're definitely a heavier unit. They're interesting looking. You could see there's a grill in the back there. And I think for, well, these are 100 and I think $30. In fact, let's just go through the list I have up right now. Um, Indiegogo's not up. The Focal Elex are on sale today. Just have to get there today. Link in the description. Uh, the Blondes are $38.99. Here, $129 even. Nine reviews, only nine reviews. Five stars. I expect after I'm talking about them and telling you, hey, by the way, you know how stacks have electrostatic drivers and these do, and then these have the similar, similar detail retrieval? Simil... Similar detail retrieval to stacks. Now, out of a hundred and thirty dollar IEM, I think people are paying attention to that now, and I expect more reviews in there. And another thing is, I actually found the tin T4s compared to these, which I wasn't going to compare them because I figured these would be the wide, soft, gentle ones, and these would be the more aggressive compared to those. But we're talking about the same price range. When that hits hundred nine, this is one hundred twenty nine. And they're trying to add a little more detail to these, and they're accomplishing it. They're a very soft, pleasing IEM with solid low end. But you know what? These are not painful ever. That electrostatic, I think, I think the true winner here might be the tapes. I'm never giving up my P1s. The blondes are hilariously good for $40. The tin T2s are always going to be my main recommendation 
because they come perfect and the blondes need some work on tips and wires. The T4s, the T4s, once they're actually out and not stuck in Indiegogo hell, are gonna be an amazing set of headphone IMs to recommend. Headphones, they're headphones. But only if you're not looking for incredible detail. There are like three or four types of per audiophile. I was gonna say person. There's way more types of people. You're either looking for basically Atom A5X studio monitor accuracy in your music. A little bit dry, a little bit plain, but fuck me detail. Or you're looking for the T5Vs. A little more depth, a little more width, a little more bass, a little more fun. That's the 10 T4s. And then uh, everything else is just lower or different. This is an interesting time, again, for IEMs to be around because you start looking at all the accessories and you're like, well, I don't care if it comes with a slippery ass M&M that isn't very chalk. Holy shit, that was an actual drop that time. That isn't any real good at holding it or a leatherette case that looks like it should keep a wedding ring in it. This is like the sound quality alone, you could switch wires for $20. So by all means, either one of these, if they're on sale today, jump on them. Well, I know these are on sale for the first time, but if the sure tapes drop from 129 to 100 or 110, if you are an IAM person and you've always wanted to know what stacks sound like, today. Anyway, bravo on all these IMs. You've all done great. You've, you're just, you're all great. You're all fantastic. That wallpaper available in the description. $5 patrons get to see every wallpaper, every review early. Uh, this review, unfortunately, could only be on Patreon for like a few hours. You can't buy the tin T4s anyway right now. They won't go on sale till 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on 11.11. But I want people to know about the uh, Focal Elex. There's a couple more mash drop sales. These things are stellar, is the fucking word. I'm still praising the Tin T2s. I don't, I don't think they're gonna ever be truly beaten. Unless there's like a revision two of the blondes, like the blonde blo 4s that they just fix all these stupid little problems that hang around them. But you don't have to go spending money on silver wires. And my, I will carry these tin P1s to my fucking grave because I love them. So everything here is a great goddamn example of awesomeness. Anyway, I'm done. Check out the Patreon. Five dollars here. Yard sales come up. One of these might end up in a yard sale. I... Shit. Maybe none will end up in the yard sale. Maybe I'll yard sale that, even though I don't own it. Joe will be fine with that. Joe will be fine with that. $10 patrons get into the private Telegram chat where Joe is, and Joe lent me that. And, um, sorry, Joe. But uh, they get to know about all this stuff early. They know, they've known for days what my opinion is on the tin T4s. They've known for days what my opinion is on the sure tapes. And when I'm done with this, I'm gonna to talk to them about this review and how it went and how I almost crashed it into the goddamn screen. It would've been horrifying. So behind the scenes tier is $10, $15.30 above that. Um, basically, you get my personal private attention whenever you have a problem. And uh, I love you forever, and you could feed my cat directly. If you ever come over, you just hand feed her. I think that's done. Check those out. Uh, link to the Indiegogo for this. Oh, God almighty. Link to the Amazon for this. The blondes, the P1s, and these T2s are still fucking great. And any other, keep in mind, during this, if you've I don't know how long this is, 24 minutes? Anything else I find throughout the day, and probably from today through Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I will be posting as many sales as I can in my um, community tab. Because people come to me with them, and they're like, where do I, who, I gotta tell people about this, and I'm like, I got it, I got it. So I'll see you all tomorrow for something else, probably another speaker, or maybe that, or maybe one of those. And, uh, yeah, have fun. Enjoy the holidays. If you can call it that, it's just a sale day.